We have here Rand Fishkin from SEO Moz, for those of you who don't know. Um, Rand, some, some people asked you during the conference about the importance of age in links. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and just in general for people who weren't at the conference to know more about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, Gina, thanks for having me. Uh, so, let's see. The first thing I would say about the age of a link is that there are temporal factors, but I'm not a big believer that over the time that a link exists, it continues to pass more and more value. Uh, that said, I, I do generally agree with the idea that there's correlation, although ne not necessarily causation, between sites, websites, and web pages that have been around a long time and performed well for a long amount of time, uh, that getting links from those types of sites and pages certainly provides more value than getting links from a brand new website, uh, at least most of the time, right? now. You know, brand new website that's very hot that just got published on TechCrunch and 50 million bloggers are linking to it and everybody's talking about it in the press, right? That's a different story. Uh, so, you know, a, a site, a website like uh, uh, Hunch.com, right, which is launched by Chris Dixon, who had sold Site Advisor and he had lots and lots of attention. Tons of people are linking to it. Getting a link from them, probably a really good thing as opposed to some old crusty site that no one's paying attention to. But uh, as a general rule, I don't think about, oh, we need to acquire links only from old domains, or we only we need to uh, get a link out there and then it'll pass more juice or more value two, three, five years from now than it does today. That's that's not been my experience. So it's not so much about the link, it's about the domain? Well, and it's not so much about the age necessarily as all sorts of other metrics that go along with it, right? Mm -hmm. a, a site or a page that has earned lots of attention that uh, is naturally linking to you editorially, that has a lot of good quality behind it, it's just going to be more valuable. And that doesn't always perfectly correlate to older versus younger. Got it. One more thing that you talked about that was really interesting was um, how to start with competitive analysis in terms of SEO. Mm -hmm. um, for someone who's just starting, how would they start out? Well, so my uh, advice is generally, first you need to know uh, have a, a good sense of the goals that you're going after, right? So if you are doing competitive analysis because you just want to raise the ranking of this one individual page for an individual keyword, you're gonna have a very different process than if you're trying to, uh, I don't know, say enter the food service market and be the you know top number one restaurant directory in a city. That, that it's kind of fundamentally different goals and therefore different types of analyses are appropriate or inappropriate. Uh, once you establish which one you're going after, then you need to look broadly or deeply, right? So if it's an individual ranking, you're looking very deep at you know this specific search result page, who's ranking number one through 10, what kinds of metrics do they have, who's linking to them, how many different domains link to them, uh, how do you compare against those metrics? And then when you, when you might look at you know my restaurant directory example, you go to a city and you say, oh, well, Urban Spoon and Yelp and I don't know, Yahoo and maybe City Search, like they're all performing very well in the city. What do I need to do to get on par with them, sort of domain power wise and influence wise, and who have they connected with in this city that's uh, maybe being very influential? So it's a it's a tough question to just answer right off the bat and give one answer. I understand. To, but yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, one last question. Sure. What deodorant do you use? What do you, uh, so I'm allergic to a lot of deodorants, but I use the. Uh, the Arm & Hammer baking soda one, even though I've been a huge fan of the Old Spice guy and the Old Spice campaign. I thought that was super genius. So the, uh, yeah. The but not box. enough for you to wear the actual. But I would if I weren't allergic to it. Mm. Yeah, so okay. I tweeted at Old Spice guy, but he did not reply to me, so. Old Spice guy, please reply. <laughs> no, it's it's cool, really. I'm fine. I don't need, I, what's his name? Isaiah Mustafa or something? Yes. He has like the coolest name in the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. I bet it's a fake name. Yeah, and let's make sure he doesn't reply to my wife either. She's got a little thing going for that guy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that was an appropriate heckle, uh, chuckle there. Thank well, you. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you.